In this video, we will be discussing the drill press. Wear safety glasses or suitable eye protection when working on or around machinery. Be aware of piercing and entanglement hazards. Keep fingers and hands away from rotating drill bits and spindles. Never place your hand or any part of your body in this machine. Prolonged exposure to loud noise can cause impairment or loss of hearing. Wear suitable hearing protective devices such as earmuffs or earplugs to protect against objectionable or uncomfortable loud noises. Turn off the main power to the machine and wait for the drill bit or cutting tool to stop turning before removing debris, removing or securing the piece or part, or changing the position of the work table. Always ensure that your workpiece is held securely prior to beginning any drilling operation. Using a chuck key, ensure that the drill bit or cutting tool is properly locked into the chuck before beginning any drilling operation. Make sure that any adjusting tools or chuck keys are removed prior to turning on the machine. Keep work area clean. Cluttered areas invite injury. By overloading the machine, you may cause injury from flying parts. Do not exceed the specified machine capacities. Always chamfer and deburr all sharp edges on your workpiece. Do not force the tool. Your machine will do a better and safer job if it is used as intended. Dress appropriately. Do not wear loose fitting clothing or jewelry as they can be caught in moving machine parts. Protective clothing and steel toed shoes are recommended when using machinery. Wear a restrictive hair covering to contain long hair. Maintain proper footing and balance at all times. Do not reach over or across a running machine. Stay alert, watch what you are doing, and use common sense. Do not operate any tool or machine when you are tired. Before using any tool or machine, carefully check any part that appears damaged. Check for alignment and binding of moving parts that may affect proper machine operation. Always keep drill bits sharp and properly adjusted for optimum performance. In the event of incorrect operation or dangerous conditions, the machine can be stopped immediately by pressing the E-stop button. Twist the emergency stop button clockwise to reset. Note, resetting the E-stop will not start the machine. When cleaning this machine, you can use a brush to wipe away any debris. You can then apply a light coating of quality oil or grease to any unpainted metal surfaces. At the bottom of the machine, we have the base. This will support the rest of the drill press. Below the work table, we have the table rotation lock. By loosening this, it allows us to rotate the table. Above the table rotation lock, we have the work table. On the work table, there are T-slots, which allow us to install vices and other appropriate attachments. Above the work table, we have the chuck. This is what will hold our various tools for drilling and tapping. This drill press does have an adjustable guard that may be required during certain drilling operations. This will cover the chuck and restrict access during your operation. 
above the chuck, we have a depth adjustment. This restricts movement of the drill to a specified distance. On our control panel, we have a rotation selector switch. This selects if the chuck will rotate clockwise or counterclockwise. Above the rotation selector switch, we have an emergency stop button. Press this button in the event of incorrect operation or a dangerous condition. Twist the emergency stop button clockwise to reset. To the right of the emergency stop button, we have the stop button and start button. Pressing the stop button will stop the motor. Pressing the start button will start the motor. Toward the top of the machine, we have a speed selection chart. Depending on your application, you may need to switch speeds of the spindle. Changing speeds is done using the speed selection handles. The positions of the handles must match the chart diagram to run at the specified setting. Toward the back of the head, we have a drill head position lock. This will allow us to rotate the drill head on the column. We also have a drill head adjustment drive, which will raise and lower the head of the drill on the column. The feed handle allows operator control of lowering and raising the drill spindle. On the column near the table at the rear of the machine, we have a table position lock. Unlocking this will allow the operator to loosen the table. We then have a table adjustment drive, which allows us to raise and lower the table. We first need to measure and mark the location that we will be drilling. Using a center punch, I'm going to place a small divot in the location that I want to drill. After our piece has been marked, we can load it into the machine and secure it to the table. Double check that the drill bit is secure in the chuck. By loosening the table rotation lock and using the hand wheel, I can bring the drill bit down to my material and rotate the table at the same time until the drill bit lines up with my drill location. This drilling operation will be done at 125 RPM and it will be done in the clockwise position. Pushing the start button will activate the drill. Using my right hand, I will control the feed wheel and with my left hand, I will be applying a small amount of cutting fluid to the drill location. As you complete the drilling operation, I like to raise the drill bit and lower it into the material to help clean any remaining bits of metal. At the end of the drilling or tapping operation, you can raise the drill bit and press the stop button. Once the spindle has stopped, we can loosen our material and advance it for our next cut or remove it altogether. The debris from the drilling operation will be very sharp like razor blades. In the event of incorrect operation or dangerous conditions, the machine can be stopped immediately by pressing the E-stop button. You can then twist the button clockwise to reset it.